Hi, I'm Corey Winter. And I'm Connor Nickel. And this is our bicycle ski attachment. First question you might have is what is a ski attachment? Um, this is simply an apparatus that attach, attaches to the forks of a mountain bike. This can be done so in a variety of ways. Um, currently on the market, they have a single ski attachment and a dual ski attachment. Uh, we chose to do this project due to our combined interest in both um, in snow sports, uh, skiing and snowboarding, uh, as well as our like interest in mountain biking. Uh, we wanted to take the current products that are out on the market for this industry uh, and improve upon them and make that our senior project uh, something that takes these flaws, their flaws into consideration uh, and brings something new and um, interesting to the market. So well, as you can see here, this is an initial prototype that a couple friends of mine and I designed my freshman year at Alfred State. Uh, we used a BMX bike frame and made up these triangle brackets and just mounted on in place as the wheels. After taking it out and testing it a couple times, we decided that we liked it. So we wanted to create larger frames to work with our actual mountain bikes. But after going out and testing those, we came across a couple flaws that didn't work out quite as well. So a couple of our initial considerations is if we want to do a one ski or two ski design, a uh, spring rebound or a beam suspension system on it, fork mounts to, so that it can be incorporated with different types of mountain bikes, the material of the subframe so it can withstand the forces acting on the system, control arms to help distribute the weight across uh, the attachment, and then a braking mechanism to help slow down when you're moving. So with the traditional one ski, it's one of the most common out there on the market right now. And uh, one of the main manufacturers is fat bike skis. So some of the considerations with the single ski design that we had is that it's more unstable in turns, a little wobbly when handling on rough terrain, uh, possibly more prone to sliding out due to only having one edge of one ski. Uh, it's a little bit harder to incorporate a braking system due to having only the little surface area. And then it would be harder on the suspension components as there's less surface area to distribute the weight. Um, our second concept was a two ski idea. Um, this has actually been a senior project elsewhere at Sherbrooke University. Um, they wanted to extend the life of the biking season and make a, a snow sport um, that combines the two. Um, we did not want to incorporate the track that they did, but we did like some of their um, their key components on their dual ski design and we did um, end up making our project a two ski design over the one ski and here's why. Um, though the um, two ski design is going to be substantially heavier, um, we considered this into our design um, thinking that it would actually, when going down a hill, which our um, our prototype would, would most likely be doing, um, keeping weight towards the front end will allow the um, It'll allow constant, um, it'd be more controllable handling and turns. Um, it'll, it's kind of, it fights that one ski design where there's not enough weight in the front. Uh, it tends to slide out. Um, our design will be uh, able to overcome this. So for our design, we concluded with the two ski, like I just mentioned before. Um, we wanted to incorporate an air shock instead of a spring rebound like we were um, talking about in our proposal. Uh, we did end up using a beam suspension as we'll go into depth here in a little bit. Um, and we wanted to be able to have our, um, our ski attachment um, be able to be used by a variety of bikes, uh, different styles, different size tires. Uh, we wanted to have that incorporate, um, so for all users. We also talked about a braking system in our last design. Uh, we did not end up incorporating this into our current design um, due to the impractical reasons and the fact that we still will have a rear tire. So the braking mechanism will still be um, applied to the tire. So this is uh, our, so over here on the left is our initial sketches for our 2D design. It was just when we were brainstorming, trying to come up with ideas on how we wanted to incorporate it. And as you can see on the right, this is how we applied it to our uh, attachment. Um, we incorporated the control arms to help with uh, rotating back and forth from turning and distributing weight as well as beam suspension on the skis. So 
like I was talking about with the beam suspension, um, this is kind of similar to how, this is the original um, idea that we had uh, with one end fixed. Uh, we have two cantilever beams working in unison. Um, they're going to be located, like this would be the front of the ski, this would be towards the rear. So as the front of the ski sees any imperfections in the snow, uh, the beam suspension uh, will be able to account for that and dampen these effects. Um, it's made out of, we, our original concept was to make this out of a composite material, um, such as reinforced rubber, maybe even carbon fiber. Here's what we ended up doing with our um, beam suspension. Uh, the material we, we used was um, two millimeter thick PVC um, because of its modulus of elasticity of um, six times 10 to the six newton meters squared. Um, this will help dampen the effects while riding, um, keeping the, uh, the rider in control. Uh, it'll also allow for a more smoother ride as well. Each beam has a cross-sectional area of five times 10 to the negative fifth meters squared. Um, our calculations then proved that each beam would need um, 300 newtons to overcome um, and flex. So with the weight of the rider and the weight of the force acting upon it, um, these beams would be perfect for our design. So um, for the use of the control arms on our bike, we decided that we wanted to go something uh, similar to this bicycle, as you can see here, as it would pro provide substantially greater control when you're turning and leaning, but so that also helps keep the rider upright when he's uh, riding down the hill. So as you can see here, this is how uh, it got incorporated into our design. We designed it so that it has a max angle of 25 degrees. And this is a total of 50 degrees oscillation from left to right. And by this, it'll prevent the rider from leaning too far down to want make the skis want to slide out to help maintain edges. And it'll be in a, keep the rider in a more comfortable and uh, controllable position. So our original design, uh, we mentioned possibly incorporating skags. Um, we had a couple designs. The one was like a snowmobile skag here um, where you have an extruded um, surface. We have a cutaway, which is something like that, like a dome shape. Um, then we have, or the cutaway, I'm sorry, up top, and then this would be the dome shape. We decided not to incorporate this into our ski. Uh, we did not want to take away from the dexterity of it, and we didn't want to impede on um, any of the, we didn't want to hurt the forces that it can withstand um, when doing so. so. Yeah, we figured it was impractical. Um, we proved them to be unnecessary. We thought we had enough control with the edge effectiveness and the weight of the, um, the ski attachment uh, as it was. So, our universal fork mount concept we had, uh, we talked about in our proposal as well. Uh, we wanted this to, we wanted our ski design, our attachment to be able to uh, be vers versatile from bike to bike, um, different sizes, different types of axles, whether it's quick release or through axle. We wanted it to be able to incorporate a 26, a 27 and a half, and a 29 inch rim tire, uh, as well as a fat bike tire as well. Um, so the next slide, we'll talk a little bit more about that. So here, as you can see, this is our uh, adjustable fork mount we incorporated into our design. So the purpose of this is we wanted to make it versatile for all different rake angles on the mountain bike fork, whether, and this ranges from 64 degrees to 72 degrees. So we incorporated this arm with an adjustable attachment in the middle so that it can be adjusted for these different angles, but also so that any forces acting upward around the moment of the axle will prevent it from wanting to slide up the fork and possibly scratch the um, distinctions of the bike or damaging any other components. So we also incorporated a dovetail attachment when we did this. So the entire purpose of the dovetail attachment is to make it easily interchangeable for different styles of bikes. So the purpose of this attachment would be that it would have a different uh, uh, axle cylinder so that if it was through axle it would be larger like a 12 millimeter or if it was a quick release it would have the five millimeter that uh, is incorporated with those. So here we have our control arms. Um, we wanted to incorporate dampening air springs. Um, we were originally talking about coil springs but we um, 
we kind of prove those to be a little bit too quick responsive. Um, these um, these air springs are going to be a little bit more smooth, um, allowing the rider to have more control when turning and when going straight line. Um, each of these, these are um, compression springs and they each have a compression force of 100 pounds. Um, acting on both sides, that's a total of 200 pounds um, working together to um, reorientate the bike um, back to a, a neutral position. Um, it'll take 160 pounds of extension force to get these springs to start moving. Um, that being said, with a rider and with the weight of turning into a turn, um, they should prove to be about the right fit for this design. Um, fully extended, these gas springs have a length of 10.04 inches and fully compressed, they have a length of 8.07 inches. Now with our design, the way that we have it um, drawn up here, um, this gas shock will not see the full extension length nor the fully compressed length. So at all times, the spring wants to act and bring um, the skis back to its, its like home position uh, at zero degrees. So the material selection that we chose was that all of our machined parts, uh, the body, the actual control arms, um, the strut, all of those parts are made out of a 2024-0 aluminum alloy. Um, this has a yield strength of 7.5 times 10 to the seventh Newton meters squared. Um, we designed this to have um, a safety factor of 800 pounds. Um, that would be equivalent to about a 770 pound rider. Um, this would be a total of 3,558.6 3, newtons. Uh, we concluded that this material would in fact um, hold this force on all components. Um, in addition to this, all of our fasteners are made with grade, grade five steel and those components were calculated to, um, to work as well. So part of this design is we need to incorporate bearings. So in each part of the design, including the control arms and the pivot on the ski, we had to incorporate bearings. So on the pivots for the control arms, we incorporated needle bearings that were 12 millimeters outer diameter and eight millimeters inner diameter. And each one of these can withstand 600 pounds of radial load. Um, and having two at each pivot point allows it to equalize out to uh, 1,240 pounds of uh, resistance against the forces acting on it. This is only about 1,509 1, newtons that it'll actually be seeing. And down at the ski, we incorporated a much larger roller bearing, this one with a 26 millimeter outer diameter and 20 millimeter inner diameter that can withstand uh, 2,850 2, newton load on each bearing. So for the weight and size of our design, uh, the overall rate, weight came out to be about 26.8 pounds. This is very similar to that of a bike uh, on its own as normal mountain bikes weigh within the range of 25 to 32 pounds. Uh, even though this has such a significant weight, it will help keep some weight on the front of the bike when the rider is leaning back and riding to help maintain the edge, edge effectiveness. Uh, and the length of the skis is roughly 28 inches long, and this is similar to that of the mountain bike tires as their diameters are 26 inches, 27.5 inches, and 29 inches. Our calculations included um, a few things, one of which is just the simple um, static loads on the control arms, the struts, the fasteners, um, the beams. We also had to um, calculate if those were, um, the, well, the, the specific material that was going to be able to withstand a force and um, bend with it, but also come back to its original spot without breaking. Um, um, and, and still be substanti substantial for the weather. Um, the modulus of elasticity had to be considered with those uh, as well as with our control arms and all, any other material. Um, the travel of the control arms, uh, the angle of oscillation, and we had to um, consider the life of the bearings with this too. 
Um, that's why we chose roller bearings instead of ball bearings was because roller bearings have a greater um, resistance to just simply oscillating and not um, full rotation. So as you can see here, this is an exploded view of our control arms at their mm -hmm. contact points. Um, each of the bearings that you can see here, they will be pressed in the of the control arm. They can see here on the other image. Um, on the outside for where it connects to our struts, we used uh, this, these binding barrels. And we use the binding barrels due to the outside um, smoothness so that they can run inside of the bearings without uh, damaging any of the component, other components. And then for the center, we incorporate this clamp that uh, helps hold the control arms in place so that uh, twisting moment of the forces on each of the arms won't cause it to shear off or anything like that. So with those, we have these dowel-like structures coming off that go through the bearings and the control arm and into the main body of our attachment. This is an exploded um, view of our our strut to ski mount. Um, as you can see here, this is a two-part uh, mount that's attached to the ski. Um, these are threaded through and it's split where there is a shaft that's gonna sit in a housing there, um, going through a bearing right here that also is pressed into our strut. Um, up here we have the strut mount and a beam mount too, or uh, another mount for the beams um, at the front of the ski that separates and holds the two beams in place. So some of the classes that we needed to use for our design, uh, number one is material science uh, to, determine the, to determine the different types of materials necessary um, and whether or not they'll work in our design. Um, statics for determining the basic static loads, uh, the fasteners and the different components. Uh, graphics CAD, um, to do our detailed drawings and do um, geomet geometric dimensioning and tolerancing. Um, that goes hand in hand with SOLIDWORKS um, so that we can design our components, our assemblies, do our exploded views and our detailed drawings. And finally, uh, MSD to do our professional write-up with detailed drawings and calculations and incorporate those into a successful write-up. And here yeah, on this final slide, you can see our full uh, attachment incorporated into the bike so you can see how it will actually work. And thank you. Thank you.